Well, the, you know, of course, changing the context in which kids have sex is the most <laughs> difficult of all because it's a private matter and we're not there. Um, there are a couple things that, that can be done. Um, we can make contraception more easily available to kids so that they have it with them. Um, uh, some kids, not, not the majority, but, but some kids say in surveys that the reason that they don't use contraception is that they don't have access to it. So we could do something about that. And there have been school-based clinics that have distributed condoms to kids who come in there, give them away for free, have been shown to be effective when it's combined with other, um, other efforts to educate kids about safe sex. Um, we can limit the opportunities kids have to be by themselves without adult supervision. Uh, the, 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 the main period of time now for adolescents to engage in risky behavior is between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock in the afternoon um, when they're home or in their friends' homes and their parents are at work. I mean, we, we now know this. Most kids, you know, the, the image of kids having sex for the first time in the backseat of their car, forget it. They're having it in their own homes or in their romantic partners. Um, and, and so having m better supervision of kids, more situations in which adults are around is going to help all kinds of risky behavior, including risky sexual behavior. And, and how can we do that? We can make parents more aware of the need to monitor their kids, um, even when their kids are teenagers. Um, we can do a better job of funding and, and putting in after-school programs for kids so that uh, the time after school is spent in structured situations where there are adults um, who are supervising it. But there, there's, there's, there's a huge literature showing that unstructured, unsupervised time is a recipe for disaster for adolescents in terms of risky and reckless behavior. I think we have a little more uh, power to uh, affect teenage drug abuse than we do to affect teenage sexual behavior. So here are some other things um, that, that we can do. Um, we can make it harder for kids to get the substances through better interdiction and through better enforcement of point of sale laws. Um, and and, and that, both of those things have proven to be um, e e effective. Um, we can tax the hell out of these things, which frankly is probably the best single intervention that we could do. So if you look at uh, the decline in smoking that's taken place over time, which is a great thing. Um, so fewer people smoke, fewer kids smoke than was the case a couple of decades ago. The reason for that has almost nothing to do with programs to educate kids about the dangers of smoking. It has to do with an increase in the retail price of cigarettes. So kids who don't have a lot of money are very price sensitive. And so if, if we continue, as we've been doing, to increase the cost of buying cigarettes, fewer and fewer kids are going to smoke. Um, and and uh, if we increased the cost of purchasing uh, alcohol, fewer kids would, would drink. Well, I think the first thing you should do is to ask whether your, your parenting is allowing the child to get into situations where this uh, inclination toward risky and reckless behavior is going to be pursued. Um, you know, some kids can handle uh, independence better than others. And parents need to look at their individual kid and say, is my kid ready to be uh, left alone as, you know, as often as I leave him alone? Or is he ready to drive? Uh, you know, j just because a kid turns 16 doesn't magically make him mature. So, so I think that parents need to, uh, need to adjust their parenting um, to, to suit their kids. I mean, there are some, some basic principles of good parenting that have been shown to diminish risky behavior um, and to diminish other kinds of problem behavior and also to, I mean the good news is that the same things that diminish problem behavior also facilitate positive development. So by, by becoming a, a warmer parent, by becoming a firmer parent, by becoming more involved in your kid's life, um, you're going to have this positive effect. You're going to diminish problems and you're going to improve your child's functioning in school, in terms of his uh, maturity, in terms of his social relationships. Thank you.